signs for worship. Amen. If you would rise for our opening hymn, number 690, America the Beautiful. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Happy Independence Day, a day early. Good morning to all of our friends and family joining us up at Elmcrest, and that will be joining us later on. Uh, a few announcements this morning. There is coffee hour, a reminder, after service downstairs. So if you want to grab some cookies and coffee, please head down. Also. Uh, usually the council meets on the first Monday of the month, but since it is the 4th of July, we will be meeting Monday, July 10th. Um, I personally want to thank everyone that attended the prayer service Wednesday night, all those that helped out and shared their thoughts and prayers. Are there any birthdays? A baby boy, Travis and Carly. Yes, yes the newlyweds. Congratulations. <laughs> Better put that in the prayers, Dane. 
and the praise for the baby and prayers without praise <laughs> no congratulations um it's Haley's birthday tomorrow it's also Randy John's birthday tomorrow I know or and your mom's on Friday well congratulations and we will sing happy birthday Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friends, happy birthday to you. Are there any other announcements? If not, uh, a little pulpit humor this morning. This one's a, a little longer than usual, but I really enjoyed it. So, an engineer dies and reports to the pearly gates, and St. Peter's checks the dossier, and not seeing his name there, accidentally sends him to hell. It doesn't take long before the engineer becomes rather dissatisfied with the level of comfort in hell. He soon begins to design and build improvements. Shortly thereafter, hell has air conditioning, flushing toilets, and escalators. And needless to say, the engineer is a pretty popular guy. One day, God calls Satan and said, So, how are things going down there in hell? And Satan replies, Hey, things are going great. We have air conditioning, flushing toilet, and escalators now, and there's no telling what this engineer is going to come up with next. What? God exclaims. You've got an engineer? That's a mistake. He should have never been sent to hell. Send him back to me. Not a chance, Satan replies. I like having an engineer on staff, and I'm keeping him. God insists, sends them back or I'll sue. And Satan laughs uproaringly and answers, Yeah, right, where are you going to get a lawyer? <laughs> I apologize to any lawyers or engineers that might be here, but... <laughs> if there are no other announcements, if we could stand for our praise song, God of our Fathers. And that is... Which one? It's number 687 in our hymnals.
If you'd please remain standing and let's meet and greet one another this morning. In lieu of special music this morning, we will be singing an additional patriotic hymn on page 693, This Is My Country. Please rise. Thank you, please be seated. Before uh, we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, um, I just, I, I wanna play a song for you this morning. Um, I've heard this song on the station that I listen to um, and with the, the tragedy that happened in our church and in our community um, this past week, I think um, I think it would be appropriate. So before um, before we lift up our prayers, I'm going to try to make this phone work. So uh, bear with me just a moment. It's not working here. It's going to be here just in a second, so <laughs> I promise. Sometimes I'll, I'll just say this in the mean while we're waiting here, you know, uh, Jim Janess shared with us um, in one of his messages, you know, the importance or the, the joy of, of some of the songs that that we share uh, in our church, and and I think. Um, you know, music uh, in so many ways um, speaks to us 
as much as, as the scriptures do. So um, I'm hoping that I can get this to work here. should have played that after the prayers because I may not be able to talk for a while but um, are there any additions to our uh, our prayer requests this morning praises additional praises if not okay Darren Okay, if there's nothing else, let's just bow our heads just for a few, few moments here this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for this day, Father. And uh, um, to start with, Father, we just want to lift up 
all those people here in our church, in our community that, that need your touch, uh, your healing touch, Father. Um, there are um, issues and problems and in our everyday lives, Father, and then most of those uh, probably are not spoken this morning, but you know the needs of uh, all your children, Father, and we just pray uh, that you would uh, give them strength and, and healing. Um, Father, we just lift up Darren uh, the, this morning. We pray that you would be with him uh, as he looks forward to um, procedures um, with his health, Father. We just pray that you would watch over him and, and keep him safe. Father, this morning we just once again want to lift up um, the Holbein family. Um, Father, uh, we thank you uh, for the life of Taryn. Father, um, you know all too well what it is to lose a child. Um, Father, we just pray uh, that you would give the family healing, that you would give them strength, that you would give them understanding, Father. Uh, be with them and, and just mend the broken hearts uh, that, are, that they're dealing with on this very day. Father, uh, we do have praises, Father. Um, we thank you for this country. Um, Father, you made this country what it is today, uh, regardless of what um, CEOs and presidents and, and industry would tell the people of this country, Father. The only reason that this country is as great as it is is because of you, and we thank you for that, Father. And we just pray um, that we would turn from our evil ways and that you would continue to bless this country, Father. We want to thank you um, for the baby boy of Travis and Carly this morning. Thank you, Father, that there's another uh, soul among us, Father. We just pray that, that uh, he would um, grow and, and learn about you and his Savior, Jesus, Father. Be with him and bless him and, and guide him. Father, we also want to live up, lift up uh, Garrett and Jarrett and, and uh, Grace this morning. Thank you, Father, for uh, joining these two special young people together. We pray um, that you would bless them for um, decades to come. Father, we want to also thank you for the rain. Um, we watch as, as the crops grow, Father, and we just, um, we look to you uh, because ultimately, Father, you are the one that um, brings these fruits um, to ripen and to harvest, Father. We just pray that uh, you would continue to bless us with the rain that we so desperately need. We lift all up all these thoughts and prayers uh, in the precious name of Jesus who taught us to pray our Father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we do once again thank you uh, for the blessings in our lives, Father. We, we pray uh, that we would uh, just return a portion of the gifts that you ultimately own, Father, that you just uh, put us stewards of, Father. We pray that uh, we would give uh, with joyful hearts this day. Amen.
please rise for our offertory response. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. We have an engineer with us here, right here. <laughs> God bless Todd. <laughs> okay, um, if you if you notice in your bulletin this morning, um, our, our guest speaker this morning is Don Evans, and Don is seated here this morning, and uh, we thank him for being here with us. And if you'd like to come forward and, and share with us. Good morning. I want to thank the church for their warm welcome this morning. Uh, Be here today. First of all, I'd like to just kind of give you, uh, well, give thanks to this a God of ours, our Lord Jesus Christ, for this country. And you know, we're all in trouble in this nation right now. This whole nation's in a really turmoil, as you know. You don't have to listen very carefully to find that out, that we're in serious trouble. But a lot of prayer is going into this as God has raised up lots of churches in this country are praying. And you, I'm sure you all are praying that we return to our roots that was built on Jesus Christ by our early pilgrimage like who came here and even given themselves even over to death. But they loved God and the principles of the scriptures. With that in mind, next I'd like to share a little bit about me and a wife, Darlene, there in the front row. <clears throat> Maybe you could just stand, Darlene, let me see you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Darlene is from North Dakota here in Elgin you're all familiar just about an hour away grew up on a farm and I was raised in uh, <clears throat> the, they call it the hillbillies in western Maryland in the mountains and uh, of course as a child growing up I was in a, raised in a very I'd say you might call it a hell raising family to say the least um uh, with a family of children of 10. Um, but God, in his mercy, had it my neighbors praying. And you know, without prayer, nothing is going to happen good in this world. I believe that with all my heart. Prayer is the key to heaven's doors. When God will listen, you know, hear your prayer. My neighbors prayed and cried out for our family for I don't know how many years. But at the age of 16, I gave my life to Jesus. I was lonely, depressed, trying things at that time of age was not healthy for you at all. Of course, more serious things now, of course, these days. But you know, when I came to Jesus, it was in a little youth for Christ, Methodist church, they're having a Saturday night meeting. I thought, well, okay, Saturday night, I'll go to church. At that point, I told them, they asked me several times, and I said, no, I don't believe in that stuff, religion, nothing like that at all. Because, you know, all I heard in my home was God's name taken in vain. That's all I heard. Strife. Strife of home. So, I was, first time, heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, they gave his son, Jesus. And do you know, that struck my heart. I didn't get up one day and say, I want to get saved and be born again. Have you? Did, think about it. Did you get up one day and say that I want to get saved and come to Jesus? Probably not. Most of us probably say no. Well, that night, Saturday night, when I heard that message, simple message, for God so loved the world, and I was given an invitation to come forward 
four of us, young men, 16 approximately years old, came forward. And when I went into that room for counsel, they said, the counselor said, well, why don't you just pray and ask God to become your Savior through Jesus Christ. I said, what do you mean pray? I've never prayed in my life before. I don't know how to pray. Well, I broke down and prayed. He said, well, just follow me. Follow me, okay? The counselor said, follow my prayer. So I followed the prayer through the sinner's prayer. And I'll tell you, I was laughing and crying till midnight that night. I couldn't go to sleep because God's love invaded my life. This morning, I'd like to talk about that love of God. And that's what I'll talk about, you know, for the journey with God. But before I do that, I'd like to briefly share a little, maybe, humor. This couple went to Israel on a tour with some friends. And when they got there, they had a great time and things were going well. But the wife passed away. So the friends that was with them said, well, you know, it's cheaper to, to bury her here in, in, in this area, you know. So he thought about it and he thought, got thinking about it. He says, he went back and told the, the friends, he said, you know, the last person that died here, he was rose from the dead. I don't, want, I don't think I should do that. So the point was, it was cheaper to bear her there, but it would cost a lot more to send her home. But the fact is, the last person, Jesus Christ, rose from the dead in that area. And he said, no, I don't think I'd like to do that. So it's kind of a little bit of a humor and sense that he, he'd, I'm sure he loved his wife. I'm sure he loved his wife. But the point is, it was just a matter of choice there to handle the money finance, maybe in one way, in the joke. But anyway, today we're going to talk about the journey with God and discovering the depths of his love more and more as you walk with him throughout this life. There's a lot of people out there in the streets and highways and byways that need to know the love of God. Over the years, walking with God, I've learned to come to know that a lot of people need to hear that, that God loves them. So, of course, the part of my ministry has been over the years is when I go to Walmart or I go to Target, I say, God, show me people that you would like me to just tell them that you love them. And, you know, I've done that, I don't know how many times, I can't count how many numbers, but amazing how many people respond. Some of them cry. Some of them say, I'm getting divorced. Could you pray for me? Some of them say, thank you so much. I was encouraging word today that you said that God loved me. You know, you don't know who they were. It's because these people are all varieties of different type of people in walks of life. But you know what? We need to hear that word that God loves us more often. The scriptures say that we were made in his image. Okay? So we have a body, soul, and spirit, it says in the Bible here. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. But we're going to first mention about God's before creation design for us as human beings is to be a relationship with love with him. And so he created us for a purpose. There's a verse I want to read first of all here, and we'll go with that. It's found in Colossians. Kind of open up the uh, whole issue of love, uh, the, uh, the uh, basis of our love and God's love for us. If then we were raised, Colossians 3, chapter uh, 3, Verses 1 through 4. If then you've been raised together with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things that are upon the earth. For you died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall be manifested, then shall you also be manifested in glory. You know, long before creation, God had uh, you in mind. He had me in mind. And you know, if you read Psalms 139, David says, He saw me in my mother's womb. 
He created me in my mother's womb, a special design, basically. There's many translations that mention different words. The fact that he had a really planned purpose, planned purpose for his creation to be made like him in his image. And God loves everything about he made. He said it was good, even us. You know, we see ourselves a different perspective. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But before we do that, there's three different, main, or four different types of love it speaks of in Scripture. And we'll read the Scriptures of 1 John 4, 17 through 19. Um, if you have your Bible, you can do that, or just uh, follow along with me here. Get my Bible here. Where is it at? Okay. And... Uh, Read that over there. First John. This is, the, this is kind of the core of the lesson about God's love. God is love, it says in Scripture, right? So, in this book of First and Second John, love is mentioned 33 times. In the whole Bible, one translation is love is mentioned 560 times, the word love. So, there's a lot about love. In other words, love is the key to everything about who God is because God can't be nothing else. He's love. He's love. So we look at this scripture, 1 John 4, 17, and I'll read from God is love. Okay, it starts out. Okay, 17 verse. God is love. Whoever lives in love, li love lives in God, and God is in them. This is how love is made perfect among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. Think about it, no fear in love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has nothing has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God and yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. He goes on and on talking about the brother or sister love. So he first loved us by giving himself on the cross. We know that the cross of Calvary is central. The message that the church should never stop preaching the cross. The cross is the central message of Jesus Christ's love for us. And that's what got me. He just like caught me. He caught me just like that and grabbed me. It's like, you know, the love of God draws people to himself, God Almighty. Not a whole lot of people have gotten saved out preaching on hell. I do know one person, by the way. He was a college student. And uh, he did get saved out of some message that this evangelist came and was preaching a message on hell. And he came up and gave his life to Jesus. Because he was raised up in a Christian home, but he was backsliding far from God. And he said, I, he told me, he said, Don, I've got to give my life to Jesus because I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> okay, great. As the first person, the only person over the periods of years in the ministry, I've ever heard anybody say that they got saved because someone preached on hell. There is a real hell, definitely, and it's, it's real. Scripture, Jesus spoke to hell about 22 times in, 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 the, in his teaching ministries. Now remember, Jesus' ministry, if you don't mind, I walked around here a little bit. Jesus' ministry was in the synagogues teaching the scriptures, and they recognized him when he taught he had authority that no one could recognize it. But they said, this guy has authority. We don't understand where he's coming from. But he also, with teaching, followed him with signs and wonders. People got healed. People got delivered from demons. And then on the streets and the highways and byways, it was an evangelism approach. He was out there doing his evangelist work. Jesus was an evangelist. Now, there was only one man that lived perfectly in love. It was Jesus Christ on the face of the earth. You and I are in this process 
of becoming like Jesus and learning how to walk in love. Our goal is to become like Jesus in all the way we can along this journey. Now, granted, we have and do fail from time to time. And the Lord forgives us because he says if we, you know, sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God for his mercy. He is gracious. So his love, no matter what you do, it won't change his mind about how much he loves you. He won't love you anymore if you come to church every Sunday or you don't come to church at all. He won't love you less if you will not obey him or do anything that, you know, as far as uh, serving him in the ministry of helping him to Sunday school or, or uh, taking care of your uh, payments on your bills, which you maybe try to escape from or whatever, uh, and, and not get some counsel from the counseling agency. God was never changed his mind about you. You are his favorite one no matter what. There was a time in my life, for example, I was going through some real struggles. And we lived in the Caribbean, darling and I did, and served in missionary work down there in ministry and building churches, ministry. And I was an uh, adamant snorkeler. We did some snorkeling in the, in the ocean. It was in uh, St. Thomas Virgin Islands. I said, oh, well, that was so, well, that's a really beautiful place to be a missionary or ministry in church, you know, growing churches and pastoring ministry. Well, it was, however, it had its dark side too. And you go to another culture, you find people are totally different than you, and they're all black and you're all white. They're precious people. They love Jesus. Many of them, much as, much as you do or more. So I had this um, dream one night that I would, when I woke up the next day, but the dream was I was in the ocean, and I was under the water, and I could breathe, and I didn't, uh, didn't die. And I said, dream. I said, Lord, what did that dream about? He says, well, that's how much I love you. I got you in my arms. My love is like ocean and water. And it all surrounds you. And you can live in that love and still relax and enjoy life. And I love you no matter what you're going through right now. And I understand your situation. And my heart was so broken over that dream that I was laughing with joy. So God wants to reveal each season of your life, a new revelation of how much Jesus really loves you. And that's a valuable thing because we as Christians, we never have obtained the goal, but we're searching, like Paul said, I, I seek for the goal, the higher calling, the prize. Paul the Apostle, you thought, well, you know, he guy was really high spiritual, uh, you know, in the realm of the um, apostles. And, and uh, he, like some people put him next to Jesus. Well, he's not, of course. But he taught that we're to seek the Lord while he may be found. For this is the day of salvation. Now, the journey of learning love is learning how to receive his love. The revelation of his love is very much needed. Paul prayed for the church. He said, I pray that you would, and since we know a lot of time here this morning, I'll just mention the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3 through 16 through 19, 20. I won't read them out, but it talks about the revelation of Paul says, I want you to know the depth, the height, the love, the length, the breadth of how much God loves you. Well, he cried out, out for the churches, the ministry he went to and minister to. And so true, God wants to give us all a new revelation of how much he loves us. In our good, bad days, he always loves us the same. You know, it's like a child who's 60, uh, well, one of your toddlers is trying to, to walk, trying to learn how to walk at what, the year old, approximately nine months, a year old. When that child begins to walk with, uh, with the, uh, you know, just as a young child, he stumbles and falls along the way. The father doesn't say, well, he fell, or the mother says, don't fall. He walked, Johnny walked. He doesn't look at the faults or the mistakes or the failures of your life. And it's the same with us as believers. When we are with the Lord and we fall, we stumble along the way, we make mistakes, we don't intend to, but we make, we call it missing the mark, which is sin. If we sin, 
God forgives us. He doesn't look at your sin. He sees you through the eyes of Jesus. God's looking at you and he sees treasure in you. There's something about you and valuable. Why did he create you? Why, you ever wake up and one morning and say, why did God create me? Boy, I've got all these failures and I can't do this and I can't do that. And I'm not good at this or good at that. I'm a bad uh, housewife. I can't clean the home very well. You know, God does not look at what you do as far as your failures and all the issues that you have. We call it, the, I guess we call it maybe some inheritance of maybe baggage from your, maybe your forefathers that, or that you carry it in your life. Maybe it's just things that you have uh, grown up to uh, feel comfortable with, some old bad habits. But there's choices that we make in life. We all know that. But he's chose us. And that's the wonderful part about it. He saw in us this treasure inside of us that there's potential. Long before creation, he put us in Jesus. You know, it's like taking, <clears throat> taking um, a pen and put it inside my Bible and toss it into the trash, into a fire and consume it and burn it up. Jesus put the whole creation of this world, you and me, everybody that's born, and offer salvation through Jesus. On that cross, he buried, it says in scripture, he buried our sins, he forgave them, he, on that cross, everything was wiped out and destroyed on that cross. And then it says, Paul said, we were raised up with Jesus, seated with him in the heavenly realms, above all principalities and powers, in Ephesians chapter uh, two and three, if you get your Bible out and read it tonight or tomorrow, that whole scripture, and it's not just mentioned in Ephesians, but it's Colossians. And, um, and so it's other scriptures as well. Paul was teaching in three different areas. The point it made was that he took away our sins. He destroyed all the faults and failures in our life and our sickness of sin. And the old man was destroyed, but we were raised up and made new in Christ, giving us an opportunity to make choices to walk this out with him. But the love of God saying yes along the journey. Along the journey, you learn how to say yes to Jesus in every turn that comes in your life. Sometimes you may not say yes, and so you just mess up, so you know you'd like the children of the wilderness. They got set back 40 years because of their disobedience. And so the greatest love is the agape love. The fellow love is the Christians practicing deep friendship with one another love that John talks about there. Love one another as the philly love. That's the Greek meaning, Philly love. The storage love is the family members between families, and you all probably all have children here, and family members. Do you have a special love for each other in your families? But the greatest unconditional sacrifice, pure love, is above all, and that's through Jesus Christ himself. God, our, And so God our Father, he wants to be to you everything you need. He wants to be your total love. In relationship of intimacy with him. He's out to create a daily walk of intimacy. Do you know it's possible? And I believe you do. A lot of you are walking with it. Hearing his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. We grow to hear his voice because of, we respond to the love he has for us. I get up in the morning and say, well, Lord, Holy Spirit, what are you doing today? What do you want me to do today? Is there anything outside my schedule or plans that you want me to do? If our lives are totally committed and surrendered to Jesus, the Holy Spirit wants to guide us because he said he'll teach us all things and he'll direct our paths for those who walk righteously with him. So God's calling us to a deeper walk with him. So that when we're out in the public in the marketplace, we see someone with a depression over them or we see someone that just really needs a good word of saying, I love you. Or, excuse, me, excuse me, Jesus loves you, God loves you. That's what you'd say that way. God loves you. I love you. God loves you because Jesus died on the cross for you. It's amazing things what God can do. So the process of salvation is to walk this narrow path with a forgiven spirit, broken heart for the lost. And you know the dangers along the way, we know we have an adversary. And what he attempts to do is distort us to make us go a different direction, and he'd use it through lies. John 8, 32, I believe it is. He's the father of all lies. The scripture says, Satan is the father of all lies. And you know what he lies are? 
of course, negativity. And many of us have grown up, or some of us not grown up, maybe we've so been blessed and had all kinds of father love and affirmation, and, and we've had all kinds of uh, encouraging words in our lives, and we've been blessed with that. But this process, the love of God brings freedom and deliverance from sin. Freedom and deliverance from anxiety and fear. You're living in a world today, a lot of people are so messed up, bound by fear, anxiety. And they're going to mental institutions, they're going to doctors getting medication stacked on top of one medication after another. But when Jesus' love comes and he encounters you, like, you know, he will, if you ask him, show you his love for him, or for you. This love will set you free. Free indeed. For whom the Son shall set free shall be free indeed. So there's freedom. The gospel is all about freedom. It's not about how good you can try to strive to be and make it yourself on your own. It's your own plans together. Well, I'm going to have a seven uh, point plan how I'm going to be a better uh, Christian. Or uh, seven, three points of how I'm going to have my devotions every week as far as how I'm making my, set my goals. Well, that's good and fine. However, sometimes it ends up to be a very striving struggle, battle, and you keep these, try to keep these promises and you fail, and you say, oh man, I just give up, I quit, I can't keep that promise anymore. And you know, God wants to show us that the work is finished. We just need to learn how to say, I love you, God. And learn how to become, make, develop your prayer life with Jesus. Develop your relationship with God. Develop your worship time with God. Your personal worship with God. Make your own little house of worship in your home. At your home where you live. And that's what I've been working on over the years. And I find it works. I believe the script, it's scriptural. That uh, it's not the church's job to raise our children, so to speak. It's the parents and the children to learn how to make Jesus their own. I've seen so many pastors' children become prodigals because the children were never given the love that Jesus really needed to give to them. Because the pastor's too busy helping the church, too busy helping the unsaved the world out there. It happened to our family, sort of, in the way. We since we've been in the ministry many years, our children went astray, became prodigals. Yeah, okay. I'll just be frank with you and very transparent. But, because Darlene and I have been prayer warriors, we say, we're not going to let the devil steal our children. We cried out to God in the middle of the night, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, until we seen a breakthrough in our hearts, and giving them up to God. And then they came home to the Lord. All beautiful Christians right now love Jesus. Of course, they have their own spiritual battles. They have husbands, they have children and grandchildren. But you know what? Thank you, Jesus, that prayer works. Prayer works. I want to encourage you with that. So if you have children or grandchildren, don't give up. God will bring them back if they're gone down the road too far. So in closing, I'd like to mention a few things here. To, to bit, point out a couple of dangers, the, the, is believing lies. Believing lies is a very dangerous thing as a Christian. The enemies come and try to kill and destroy those believers who love him, love God with all his heart. So the enemy comes in and, and he'll whisper on our minds and hearts and say, well, you're not really worth anything. You are worthless because you don't have this gift. You don't have that gift. You don't have that ability. You, know, you don't you look good. You don't, you're not handsome. You're not a good singer or whatever it may be. That's a lie of the devil. Okay? Because the Bible says you are accepted as a son and a daughter in Christ. You, he's loved. You're, you're loved by God. You are worthy. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ has made you worthy, not by works, lest any man should boast. I'm alone. I'm never have any friends. Oh boy, isn't that a, one of the common lies? Uh, it, of course, I think all of us probably may have had that one. I know I had probably all these on the list here. I'll just mention a few. But I'm alone. No one's my good. No, I can't find a good friend. We, uh, you know, the devil tells, especially these teenagers these days. I can't find a good friend in my school. Uh, I don't know what to do anymore. And they go home crying or to mom and dad. Or, uh, and it's because, well, I'm too religious. Well, no. You know, it's the enemy's lies again. He wants to corner you off and tear you down and get 
your life a mess and destroy it. He's come to seek and kill and destroy, the scripture says. He's not come to make life and blessing over you. Only God wants to do that for you. I feel like well, nothing will ever change in my life. I've been praying, asking God for help, but he don't seem to be there. He's not around nowhere. That's another lie of the devil. Because the Bible says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's always with us. So there's, you know, there's all kinds of lies the enemy will try to do to bring you out of the presence and the love of God. Now, Hebrews 12, 2. For the joy, Jesus said, the says the scripture, for the joy set before him, he, what, bared the cross. Jesus saw on the way to the cross, and long before that, he, he saw, the, I believe, in eternity. He saw the joy of becoming our Savior and our lover and our keeper, our protector, our shield, and the name and the promises go on as you read Psalms, scriptures. God saw in us a special relationship of love with him. A bride, you know, Paul speaks of marriage, similar to that of Christ. Christ is the, is, is, is the example. You know, when it first was in the, in the creation, there was a first marriage, and there's going to be a final wedding, the great supper of the Lamb. So God saw in his potential. He delights in us. It says in the scripture, he delights in his upright ones. So there's so much that God has in store for you. Be encouraged. The Lord is not finished with you yet. And he, you say, well, I'm too old. No, you're not. God has plans for you. I've seen people in their 80s and 90s preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with great love and compassion and power, and the Lord is still using them to lead many people to Christ. So be encouraged. Your day, your hour, and you think, well, you know, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a preacher, or whatever. You know what? The word serve in the Greek talks about everybody who is a believer. It speaks to everybody. So your serve position, or the, what you're doing in service, may not be pastor or pastor or Sunday school teacher. It tends to be, it has been historically, that they elevate them people, which is totally incorrect. You are the servants. We, I am the servant. All we just do different things in serving God. It looks differently for everybody. God has a ministry and service place for everybody on the face of the earth who will call upon his name and seek his face. The Lord loves to see his fulfillment found in you of the joy set for him, before him. So it makes him joyful and glad and pleased when he sees his church walking in the ways of his heart and his desires. So this morning, if you feel that you are not very important, or you may be discouraged. You know, times are tough financially. Times are tough mentally, emotionally. And you have struggles in your spiritual walk with God. It's time to say, Lord, I want a revelation of your love. I want to see that I do have hope. There's hope for me. There's hope for me. I still have hope to go on. The suicidal is now rate has gone so high in this country. People have lost hope, lost trust in leaders, in the organization, the government's been disappointing of all that's going on with the corruption. But you know what? There's one who never fails us, and you know who that is. Jesus, our lover, our savior, our keeper. He is so good. And you know what? That's what keeps us being in his presence, because his presence, his love, gets rid of, rid of all love, gets rid of all disappointment, discouragement. You know, when you turn music on, you start worshiping the Lord in your home, depression, heaviness goes away. Someone told me one time, you need to start considering just having worship in your home all day long as much as you can. Just play music of worship. Because worship goes up to God. And the presence of the Lord dominates your home. God bless you. Anybody here this morning would like prayer? Darling and I would love to pray with you. We have been around some runs, but we have a lot more 
to see God accomplish and the ministry is not fulfilled. We all have a, a goal. all have vision, maybe, perhaps. If you don't have vision, get in love with Jesus. He'll give you vision. There's no other hope. There's times where I thought my life was over with. But you know what? God says, no. I have plans and purpose for you that are not to harm you. Jeremiah 29, 11. You hang on just, if you even hang on one scripture of verse, he's there to bless and prosper you. My plans are not to harm you or destroy you or kill you, but they are to bless you and prosper you. That's God. That's our God. He loves to bless. He loves to encourage. He loves to make you fruitful. He loves to, to uh, bless your family financially. He bless, loves to give you grandchildren that are beautiful, because all of them are beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Don. We will close our uh, church service this morning by standing and singing our closing hymn, number 695, My Country, Tis of Thee. Let's just bow our heads just for a last time for a moment. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. Father, and I pray that uh, for each one of these people present here this morning, uh, that you would give us strength and you would give us courage, Father, uh, as, as believers, that you would make us disciples, Father. We acknowledge the fact that um, we cannot change the world, Father, as individuals, but as disciples, Father, we can touch the lives of, of everyone uh, that we meet each and every day. I pray that you would give us the strength and the courage and the joy uh, to share uh, the love of Jesus with those we meet. In his precious name, I pray. Amen. <laughs>